So again, just to recap to anyone who wasn't here, I'm Jeremiah, um, I'm an entrepreneur, activist and author. I'm one of the trustees at the Kurt Geiger Kindness Foundation. Welcome to the inspiration sessions. Um, today is all about Business by Design, a new learning program brought to you by the foundation for 18 to 20 year olds. And it's all about helping people navigate and break into the creative industry. And today I am going to be joined by two incredible people from the creative industry. actually got into the positions that they're currently in. Kasma, sorry, we, we've had some tech issues. Um, can you hear me yeah, clearly? Is there any light? Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. All right, we're going to give Ruben another shot. Okay, um, I think let's get into it. Um, so for those who are watching who don't know a lot about yourself, could you tell everyone who you are and what um, you're currently um, so up to? So my name's Kazna and I'm a fashion designer. I'm from Sheffield. Um, and I just recently presented at London Fashion Week. Um, can you hear me or yes. am I echoing? Okay, cool. Oh, no, 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 I can hear you clearly. Um, yeah, so my clothes yeah, combine yeah. Middle Eastern fabrics with streetwear. And I recently presented a film called Fight for Me Sheffield at London Fashion Week. So, yeah. Incredible. Um, and what was your highlight at London Fashion Week? That must have been incredible. It was crazy. I can't believe, like... I organized that myself. I think the highlight was seeing everything come together last minute because everything was a mess for weeks and yeah. then literally in the last moment, everything came together. I can imagine sometimes life is like yeah. that, but you've got to keep on going. I've got a question for you um, because I'm thinking about it from my perspective, you know, a couple of years ago, being someone going through the school system, growing up, would you say you had a clear sort of vision for what career you wanted to go into? When I was in, in school, school, no, I had no idea. And I always felt like a lot of pressure on me at GCSEs and A-levels to make up your mind. But um, I kind of didn't make up. Yeah. I kind of didn't realise what I wanted to be until I was like 19. And then I went to college and I kind of experimented with what I wanted to do creative wise um so yeah Ruben <laughs> Ruben <laughs> before you finally sorry Instagram hasn't been on our side today um but yeah we'll catch you up so the first question I asked was for those who are watching who might not be familiar with your work. Who are you and what are you up to currently? I'm a creative entrepreneur. Uh, so yeah, I've been building businesses since I was 14. First business was a, a streetwear brand. And then since then I've dabbled in, you know, a lot of creative projects. So creative direction, production, casting. Um, and now I'm kind of ended up falling into tech. Um, so building tech, which empowers um, creative talent to uh, manage their own careers and book work and get paid. Um, so yeah, kind of a very windy story to get to where I am now. Incredible. And as a similar question to what I asked earlier, um, when you were sort of going through school, you were a couple years younger, did you have any sort of indication into what career you wanted uh, to end up in, um, in the future? I always had two dreams, I guess, or two alternative paths. Um, so I either wanted to be a fashion designer or an architect. That's a 
very wide range, but they do sort of complement in a particular yeah, way. For sure. And I feel like sense. I get to do both of those things um, within what I do today in, in different ways. Yeah, no, definitely. I think thinking back to that question for myself, um, I would say I was in a position where I wasn't too sure what I wanted to go into in the future. I knew that I had so many skills in like loads of different areas, but I did have this pressure to sort of um, think about doing something down the traditional route, if I sort of quote unquote call it that. Did either of you feel any pressure to have to go down a traditional route for a career? I mean, in my case, it was a mixture of my environment um, and also coming from like a West African background, you know, it's very much, um, you need to become maybe a lawyer, or you need to do medicine and become a doctor for like many people like myself. So did you feel any sort of pressure to explore a traditional career path? Okay, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> um, when I was in school, definitely. I think the only creative subject I had in my school was art. And it was kind of, it was kind of just like fine art, just painting like a banana. Like it wasn't anything like where you can like think of really new ideas and put it into practice. Um, so I think kind of the school kind of put pressure on me um, to think traditionally, but I was always going to be against it. And then when I told my parents, I kind of wanted to focus on like creativity. They really encouraged it, which I'm super grateful for. Um, but I feel like I didn't get a chance to really explore it until I left school. Nice. Um, yeah, similar to yourself, Jeremiah, I feel like I had external pressures from my parents. Um, so my mum's Filipino, and so she kind of brought those sort of cultural expectations of her thing was either be a doctor, a priest, or a pilot. Um, so, yeah, she definitely, yeah, she definitely wanted um, me to go down an academic route. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I think that as like I explored more things, I realised that you know, kind of my learning my way of learning was different to, to that. And I, I learn a lot by just being in the room um, and absorbing, absorbing an environment and, and kind of learning as I go along. Of course, of course. And I mean, both of you have accomplished some incredible things. And when you were at the beginning of your journey, did you feel like you knew how to actually achieve those career aspirations? Like, did you know it from the beginning or, you know, did it sort of happen along the way? Um, for me, I had no idea how to do anything. I think for me, education really helped me, like going to art, like my little community college in Liverpool and then going to do my BA in Manchester and then slowly going to London to do my masters. I think it really gave me like a structure to aim for. Otherwise I would have had no idea what to do. No one in my community has done fashion before. My parents didn't know anything about creative subjects. So I think if it wasn't for my teachers, I wouldn't have known what to do. Yeah. For me, uh, I was always exploring um, just create creative outlets from an early age and I think that I was lucky enough to grow up well I say lucky but I do really mean it with social media and um, having a platform to showcase that work because I grew up in in the countryside as like a village of like 2,000 people so there's just and both of my parents worked for the NHS so there's just like no way that um, I don't know, I could just like bump into a friend on, you know, and, and that person, person like works in, or like even like adults, you know, work, um, that worked in like that industry or in the creative industries. So I kind of had to do a lot of networking and I did that networking through social media by 
you know, kind of sharing like um, just like clothing design or um, you know, did a lot of photography, just putting everything and, you know, that I, I was creating online and then you know, kind of over time started gaining a bit of a following from it. And then, yeah, my first kind of opportunity was, um, yeah, just like similar to um, business by design, actually. I submitted some of my work or my portfolio to um, just like a kind of open competition or, um, you know, brief and ended up getting selected. And that was like the first time that I could, uh, you know, get my train basically tra um, covered by a brand to, you know, go up to London. And then, yeah, um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really a, a, a clear path really i didn't i didn't have much of a, a kind of guide from from like teachers or anything like that just kind of explore different avenues and try to put myself out there brilliant um by the way to the audience any questions that you may have pop them into the chat i'm going to come over to as many of them as possible um you know, touching on what both of you shared, um, business by design, again, I think is super important because, again, there's not a lot out there on how to actually break into the creative industry. And, you know, if we're in an education system, we go to school and creativity is actually left out of that, you're not actually learning any skills towards breaking into the industry. I think my next question is, how easy would you say it was for the both of you to actually break into the industry? Um, I shouldn't maybe say how easy because I know it probably isn't easy, but if it was super, super hard, let's say the top of the scale was 10, and if it was super, super easy, let's say the bottom of the scale was one. So like, how easy was it to actually break into what you're currently doing? Do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. Um, I, I still feel like I'm trying, to be honest. Same. But yeah, it, I, I would, you know, I do think it was in between an eight and a ten um, for me. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's something which is like I'm passionate about as well. Is just how how you can provide like financial kind of enablement for specifically like creative people to, um, you know, actually afford to explore these different routes. I had I personally had to, because because I you know didn't have somewhere I could really stay or have family that I could stay with in London to kind of network and go to these events. Like I did a lot of you know, kind of sofa surfing just to get, you know, internships and different things like that. So I think that, you know, what, what kind of business um, by design is doing by like kind of providing the mentoring, but also like the paid work experience is something that I would have, you know, loved to have have had, um, you know, myself. So, so let's even say, you know, you mentioned it was like eight to 10 on the scale. So that's super, super hard. How can we actually turn that around on its head? So what can we actually do to make your story and the story of many of um, other young people, you know, easy for them to actually break into the industry? Yeah, it's a really hard question to answer because um, I do think a lot of it just does come down to like the economics and how you know, we can make systems that allow people that don't have, like come from different backgrounds to have the luxury of trying something new or exploring, you know, um, I think that that's always been the most challenging thing. I think it's changing now with, you know, interns like having to, you know, be paid legally. So I feel like that's kind of moving the industry forward. Um, Outside of, you know, kind of the finance or finances of it, I think that you know, anything which is like community driven um, that, that kind of does spotlight, um, you know, diverse, you know, kind of opinions and, um, 
and and kind of, and um you know highlights people from all kinds of backgrounds i think that you know that that helps but yeah it's a really difficult question to answer yeah, yeah no of course um I, I think the answer may be different for like different people as well but i can totally relate with like everything you're saying um the barriers to entry are just always super super high and it's like if you want to go into the creative industry to earn money you almost have to like spend money so like what does a young person do if you know they don't have the capital around them to support that um, i think casma uh, a, a question that i have are what are some of the challenges that you've sort of like faced along the um, way i feel like it's been really hard maybe when you don't see people that look like you in certain rooms it's like what am i doing in this room i think imposter syndrome is the biggest challenge for me um especially in fashion and yeah. especially in london um because i came from sheffield so it was always London was always seen as like this big city and then the fashion industry was always seen as like elitist to me. But also I would say the thing that, cause you guys mentioned, you kind of have to spend money to make money. And I would say money is definitely one of the biggest challenges. But what I learned through this whole London Fashion Week experience is that if you like start in your corner, then you can go global with that energy and there's so many people like because we're so focused on like the end goal we forget there's so many people literally right next to us that are supporting us and cheering us and those are the people that are going to help you break down those barriers and those glass ceilings so in my london fashion week presentation i had no money i was like broke i was like i don't know how i'm gonna do this and it's so crazy because on instagram it literally looks so glamorous and everyone's like wow you've made it you're at london fashion week and i'm like you don't know behind the scenes but it was like the my local community that were helping me through it so i got yeah many tea for free it was like my friends helping me set everything up for free so i would say build your community sideways instead of like aiming upwards build sideways and i think that's the only way we're gonna go forward as a community definitely Definitely, I totally agree. Um, so cool. This part of the live, I want the three of us with all of our experiences, all of our knowledge to board an aeroplane. We're going to go on the aeroplane, we're going to get off of the aeroplane, we're going to each take a car to a special door that we remember. We're going to knock on that door, and on the other side of that door is our 15 year old self. What I want you to basically answer is what at that moment would you say to your 15 year old self having learned everything you've learned, um, having experienced anything that you've experienced, um, what advice would you give your 15 year old self? <laughs> it's a really big question by the way, so if you need to think about it, <laughs> let me know. That's such a hard question. <laughs> um, um, I'd probably say don't put as much pressure on yourself. I think I think that you know pressure can be a good thing in that it drives you forwards. Um, but I think that it doesn't yeah it doesn't have to be you know something that you kind of put all of these expectations on yourself to to achieve. So yeah, focusing more on um enjoying like the creative process and that's kind of like something that i promised myself i don't know a lot a long time ago like a couple of maybe five or so years ago is that like i'll, I'll never say to myself that i want time to go faster even if it's really difficult or something is challenging it's like i'm never gonna wish that i that like i could just get through this period faster because that's like when you're learning the most and when you're developing the most as a person Do you know what's so funny and what that reminded me of? I remember being 15, always wanting to like be older. And I would look at like my older family, my older friends, just thinking, oh, it must be like 
super, super great to be like 20 or 25. Um, but again, it's that learning of your younger years are like your best years and you should really embrace them and not like rush into the future, if that sort of makes sense. Um, Kaz, what, what sort of came to mind thinking about I think it's the same, else? like don't put pressure on yourself. And like, it's okay to fail and just keep trying new things. And if you fail, it's fine, move on to the next thing. Um, I think I was like so sc scared of failing when I was 15, but like, it's fine. And now I've failed so many times since then. <laughs> and it just prepares you for the next opportunity because you just keep learning. Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Um, I think going back to um, what both of you do, what would you say is a highlight? What has been like the biggest highlight? The thing that has just made you um, shocked as to how far you've come? What is that one thing that is almost like the greatest achievement from your point of view? Um, I think for me, it was when I was at Fashion Trust Arabia and I was representing my home country of Yemen. I think that was like, really like, I was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Only because like, it's like my parents' country and I got to meet my whole family crowd and my grandparents that don't speak English, they could really like identify with it for like the first time. So I think that's like what I'm most proud of. Nice. I think for me, But I do actually find this a hard question to answer. And I think that that would probably be a learning that I'd give to my 15 year old self is <laughs> just to acknowledge. It, it, I mean, it could be multiple things. It, it does have yeah. to be um, one thing. To be honest, it's whenever I've, versus, versus like the accolades or like, you know, kind of, um, you know, winning something or being like featured in, you know, a certain publication, I think it's just, whenever I realise that I've done something which took a lot of effort and it, and was really difficult. And so that could be, you know, um, like a summit, whether that's, um, I think one thing for me, like similar to Kasna, where when it actually means something is when like a community is involved. And um, that for me was uh, when I did a show um, during London Fashion Week, um, during, I think it was just when we came out the back of COVID, and no literally no one was doing shows we were only the only show that was kind of like on the schedule just because no i don't know no one really thought it was going to happen um and then i got to see like all of my friends and people that i'd be you know i'd grown up with um and we'd all just gone through this really hard experience and we were kind of in person for the first time and you know after after the show and Oh, Ruben, I think you've cut out for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, my back. Oh, perfect, perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. But yeah, just kind of ce celebrating with, um, you know, the people that are part of, like, like my community. Um, that's kind of when, and, you know, my family were there and, and friends, so, yeah. Incredible, incredible. And I think I'm going to ask the reverse um, because I think it's really important for people to understand that there's loads of different aspects on someone's journey. So with that being said, what would you say was maybe a low point, um, a place where, you know, in comparison to maybe what you um, had as a vision for the future, it may not have been the most ideal place. Um. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I know I keep dropping these deep questions. I would say maybe for me. So I moved to London for my master's, and I was always up north before that. So I was in Sheffield, Liverpool, Manchester, and I always grew up in those cities. So when I came to London for my master's, I was low-key only here for my master's. Do you know what I mean? 
And then when the masters was over, yeah. I was like, yeah. oh my God, what's next? And it took me like a year to figure out how to build myself as a business, how to survive, not as a student in like this big city, try and be creative and make money. And I think that whole learning experience for that whole year was just very, very intense for me. It was kind of just like survival mode. And I think as a creative, I think almost every creative in London goes through that survival mode, um, that stage where it's just like painful. And it's really hard to be creative and create in that type of mindset. But yeah, I would say probably that year. Yeah. Yeah, very similar to me actually. Um, yeah, it's definitely felt like I was in survival mode for like the first two or three years that I was in London. Um, yeah, I kind of moved to London when I was like 17 or 18, very naively thinking that, you know, I'd be able to start shooting for all of, you know, these big companies and, and magazines and then realised like I had to do a lot more work and I had to meet, you know, many more people to get those opportunities. Um, so, yeah, it's something which I, I think I shied away from at the time because I think that there's this kind of... Uh, um, negative connotation to people that work like a part-time job to support their you know creative outlet um, but for me that's what I had to do you know I worked at a cafe like washing dishes for you know maybe a year and a half um, just to like support like the creative work that I was doing um, yeah it's not something that like I really even talk about now to be honest but I think it's important to share um, because that's that's kind of I don't know if it like I, I think that what what kind of Kurt Guy is doing is you know making it it so but like that doesn't have to be the case where you don't have to you know kind of grind out like really long hours in the day and then that's when you get to focus on what your passion is um, but that was that was definitely like the most challenging times for myself. With, with that being said, actually, um, you know, if a program like Business by Design actually existed, um, you know, following you leaving school, so again, 18 to 20 is the audience, um, would you have joined the program if, if it existed back then? Yeah, I, w I would have loved to. Um, yeah, I definitely think that there's more roots there should be more roots to yeah getting into the creative industry um I, ju I just had this kind of like intuition that university wouldn't have been right for me i did i did actually interview uh, you know for, for fashion design and it just just didn't feel right especially as a lot of the advice that i was getting was that and i don't know how true this is today um yeah that like especially in creative courses it's like how much can somebody like truly like push you forwards and support you they basically said when i interviewed at these different like fashion colleges or universities that it's very self-led and directed so um i just couldn't really understand why i would go and pay all of that money if i could work in-house somewhere and get paid for what i'm doing um so i I kind of yeah. decided to take that route uh, but that was that was very hard because it, it was uh, it was hard to get like a paid work you know work experience at that age so I think anything which like facilitates that um, at least it gives like a period of exploration and then if it's right for you then you can um, go into um, you know studying at a later date yeah no more Definitely, I, I totally, totally agree. Um, I think this part of the interview, because we're wrapping up soon, um, I kind of want everyone who's listening and watching to get to know you. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, what fashion trend do you wish never, ever existed? I know a bit of a random one, but... Um, I want to know both of your tastes because if you say something that should not have existed that I really like, I'm going to be super upset. I'm, I'm going to say jeggings. I just really don't. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. They're just not it. <laughs> That's so funny. Can you believe that like, everyone had jagged? Like everyone? Yeah. Like, everyone had jagged. In school, that's all I remember. Like with the fake pocket and everything, it was like printed. Wow. <laughs> who, who actually invented jagged? No. <laughs> I actually have no clue. How, how about your story? I've been seeing a lot of like TikToks recently about skinny jeans, but. I'm not even gonna go that far and say that. I, I think, you know, people should just express themselves <laughs> however, so. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're all one of the very controversial ones. Like, I, I don't personally like wearing skinny jeans because it makes me feel comfortable. There's definitely a period where, you know, I probably did wear skinny jeans. Um, so maybe I'm just protecting myself um uh, one one thing did pop into my mind which was um these like, like these like dunlop like side bags i don't know if you can remember them like people at school always used to wear like the kind of like these like side bags like they're i don't know they weren't very cool Ooh, um, so that, like yeah i care that Bad. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not into the JD, <laughs> the JD bag, but you've kept, that's, 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 that's controversial, that's, a great well. that's very, very controversial, I think for me, flared trousers, like, a lot of people are back on them, I, I can't, I can't do it, I, I just can't, I can't, like, I need a bit of grip around, my legs like towards the bottom and like, they can't be too flared. Like I remember I used to like flared um, trousers back in the day, but like, no one wore them. So you like so, skinny jeans? I didn't jeans. really want to wear them. Skinny but not too skinny. Let's call them like straight jeans. Like I can't go too anyway, controversial, we're moving on. <laughs> what is your favourite board or card game? Be yes, definitely be chess for me. I was chess club all the way. I can't remember the last time I played a board game. I think I played Scrabble with my family actually, like at Christmas. <laughs> it was so hard. I, was, I don't I was get terrible it. At Scrabble. <laughs> I was terrible. Um, I would say Twister. I just think Twister is a classic. It never gets old. <laughs> Never ever gets old. Um, what is your favorite ice cream oh, flavor? Vanilla. I'm so I'm so sorry, but like, I don't like anything that's like too crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I, I feel like you. mine's gonna be controversial as well, but it's rum and raisin. <laughs> Ruben. <laughs> Ruben. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Alright, everyone comment your, your favourite um, ice cream flavours so we can have that debate later. Another question, if you could switch your lives with one person, either dead or alive, for one day, who would you switch your life with for a whole 24 hours? Is this just to like experience what they've experienced or do you get all of the talents that they have? Oh, let, let's give you the talents, you've got the talents. That's so hard. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, someone, <laughs> someone like Da Vinci or, you know, Michelangelo or so, just so I could, you know, see the way that they like m make things. Interesting. I like that. Um, I like that. It can be anyone, Kaz. I don't know why 
I but Michael Jackson's in my head, but like I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like I don't. <laughs> There's literally no reason. Like, <laughs> um, you know what? I'm sticking to Michael Jackson. I feel like. He's like the only person that everyone in the world actually knows. Like, you can go into a village in Yemen and they know who Michael Jackson is. Do you know what I mean? No, it's true, it's true. Yeah. It's true, it's true. All right, moving more. Um, we're going to wrap up soon. <laughs> we're going to wrap up soon. Um, I'm going to try and fit in. Um... <laughs> Wait, she wants to experience the New York. I bet you do. I bet you do. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to try and um, fit in questions from people watching. Um, I think another question, what is the craziest thing on your bucket list? Like just the most crazy, outrageous thing that you really, really have to do? Again, it can be anything, anything at all. I have a bucket list, but honestly, it's literally like boring things. Actually, it's not boring. Um, I want to go to a heavy metal concert. Add that to the list. I want to, I want to crowd surf. I want to go on a skateboard. I've never been on a skateboard. And I want to do like the half pipe thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my bucket yeah. list so far. Literally, normal thing. <laughs> like throughout this live, you're very much a like, performer. You know, we have Michael Jackson. We're, we're getting the crowd surfing. A bit skydiving, of a skydiving to it. Like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. How I don't have a bucket list, so that's really hard. I to answer i think well maybe, maybe something that you would really like to do that you haven't done honestly i don't know why but it always comes back to kind of like athletic achievements which is like so outside of you know what i do day to day <laughs> um so whether that's like i don't know climb mount everest or you know like travel the world um 360 by just like manpower or something random like that yeah 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 no interesting that's fun that's super super fun um we have a question from someone in the chat saying who is the most famous person you've met or come across in the creative industry It's actually one of the Jacksons, I think. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, Jermaine? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, Ruben, your audio has gone again. But yeah, the Ruben, so Ruben has met one of the Jacksons. How um, I think Bella Hadid. Yeah, and she was oh, super cool. nice as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, both super, super cool people. Um, I think we're going to start wrapping up. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has locked in tonight on the live. Um, we really appreciate you being here. Massive thank you to Kaz and Ruben. Um, super excited about Business by Design. I think I'm going to leave you with one question. Um, what piece of advice would you give to anyone watching who really wants to get into the creative industry? Um, just what is one piece of advice? Um, Again, um, it could be a way for them to get going and to start. Um, it could be more practical, like some, somewhere for them to go or something for them to do. 
but what is one key piece of advice? Um, for me, I would say, just, um, I don't know, I would say go for it and maybe if there's something specific that you want to do and you don't know how to get into it, just email everyone, like do your research, email them, contact them, ask to do intern internships, ask for a mentorship. Because I think for me, like my mentors really helped me and yeah. Yeah, similar. Um, persistence, yeah. having people that can mentor you, whether that's like people that you know or whether that's, you know, people that you can model yourselves of and um, whether that's like through books um, or, you know, podcasts or YouTube videos, I think that you can actually do a lot because I think finding a mentor it can be hard but if you if you have an idea of where you want to go then modeling um, yourself of people that you really respect and you know you have similar values to and then yeah going back to community just trying to find uh, people that you can support and then people that um, will support you as well. Brilliant I think to recap what comes to my mind is a quote that I love to like throw around all the time that I thought about years ago, and that is change is a word, but we need it to become an action. And what exactly do I mean by that? Um, you know, we all have dreams of changing ourselves, changing our environment, dreams of where we want to go into the future. At the end of the day, you know, we can continue dreaming and continue thinking about those things. But at the end of the day, if you truly want change, um, you have to turn that change into an action. So I think with what both of you have said, you know, if you want to break into the industry, don't be afraid to email all of those um, decision makers and people. Um, don't be afraid to start figuring out what are the steps that I can take um, to actually get to the position that I want to be in. And again, we all have different environments and different factors that are, are barriers that might hinder where we want to get to in the future, but it's all about taking the action. Um, so guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining me today. Um, maybe a last little thing, where can everyone find you, um, come across your work, um, and see the things that you're up to. Um, you can find me at Kazna Asuka on Instagram and kaznaaska.com. Um, you can see my work, my portfolio, everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just uh, Ruben um, Selby underscore on Insta. And yeah, that's kind of the main place for me. Incredible. Well, thank you again so much, guys. Really appreciate you being here. Super incredible stories. Um, I hope to catch up with you again soon. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. Again, inspiration sessions will be on this account, the Kurt Geiger handle, every Monday from 6.30pm BST. Thank you. Have thank a good you. evening.